हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अजीत जायसवाल फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी पाण्डिचेरी सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी पुडुचेरी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ए टॉक अबाउट ए टॉपिक ऑस्ट्रोलोपेथिकस अंडर पेपर फिजिकल एंड बायोलॉजिकल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी स्टूडेंट इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट द डिफरेंट कॉन्टेक्स्ट ऑफ स्टडिंग ह्यूमन एवोल्यूशन हु आर ऑस्ट्रोलोपेथिकस what are the spatial and temporal distributions what are the varieties of australopithecus what is the sequence of appearance of all these varieties let me give you a glimpse of information in the intro in the form of introduction we must have remember the darwin's work all of us are quite aware about the charles darwin and his work after the publication of two of his famous book first origin of species by means of natural selection or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life and the descent of man and selection in relation to sex the concept of biological evolution in general and human evolution in particular particular took a new direction new turn the later publication specifically speak about how human being evolved from lower order animal from that time onward scholar across the globe were were in search of the fossil of the ancestor of the present day human who were apes or ape like a number of pre hominid fossils like parapithecus ageopithecus dryopithecus dramapithecus sivapithecus and hominid fossil like australopithecus and homo were discovered and are restudied in this new light the trajectory or projection of hominid development is not straight that is one species or genus subsequently giving rise to the next here we have seen a great variation branch several branching in the tree there were times when several species of human and other hominids they cohabited in this world in course of evolution a number of new variety of hominid hominid species evolved and some of them became extinct without evolving into a new form there may be several reason behind this what but some of them what you call other they evolved and developed into a new form thus if you see the tree or what is if you see the phylogenetic branching a phylogenetic branching appear like a tree with many branches and this branches have a specific evolutionary importance it will give you the clear cut connection or explanation as well as similarities and differences why they branched up from from the earlier one based on the differences and why they are all together moving in the same line based on the similarities australopithecus australopithecus are southern apes the fossil of this genus has been found between 4 million year ago or might be even before it has a spectrum of varieties all of which are extinct the member of this groups are uh, groups were biped with reduced teeth size especially the canine this two characteristic feature place the group in hominid category it is believed that one of the species of the genus australopithecus evolved into human homo now let's try to find out who are australopithecus the word australopithecus means southern apes the fossil of this genus have been found from different sites of south africa and east africa australopithecus appeared in this world around 4 million years ago or might be even before and has a spectrum of varieties all of which are extinct this group of hominids used to live in this world before pleistocene the member of this group were biped with reduced teeth size especially the canine it is believed that 
one of the species of genus Australopithecus evolved into hominid. The different sites of South Africa like Stuckfontein, Tong, Komdrai, and from East Africa like Oldboy, Letoli, and Lake Tarkana. This group of hominid used to live in this world before Pleistocene. It is believed that these two characteristic features place the group in the hominid category and it is one of the species of genus Australopithecus that evolved into Homo. There have been some recent discoveries of fossil from Africa like Selanthropus, Aurorin and Ardeopithecus that claim to be of a family hominidae. These varieties arrived in the world before the appearance of a typical variant of Australopithecus, that is, shortly after the divergence from our common ancestor with chimpanzee. They were biped but retain a number of ape like characteristic features, probably from one of these new genera. Australopithecus evolved. So, the earliest varieties are Selanthropus, Aurorin, Audiopithecus. Later varieties are Australopithecus africanus, Australopithecus afarensis, which is known to be the gracile form, and Australopithecus robustus and Australopithecus bosai as the robust form. Now we will discuss on the fossil hominid discovered so far in the chronological order of appearance in the record except that the robust Australopithecus are kept together. First let's discuss about Selanthropus. This species was discovered in 2001 from Chand in Central Africa. The word Sahel is derived from the name of the region of Africa bordering the south of Sahara and the fossil was unearthed from this place. It is the oldest known hominid dated between 6 and 7 million years old. The discovery of this fossil remains made the world to believe that hominid of Miocene period is not restricted in East and South Africa. However, proof at all challenged the hominid status of this fossil. This species is known from a nearly complete cranium and a number of fragmentary lower jaw and teeth. The brain size similar to that of an ape but with reduced subnasal prognathism. It is popularly known as a tomai that is hope of life. This individual has many primitive ape like features such as a small brain case along with some characteristics of later hominids such as the position of foramen magnum and small canine teeth. This mixture along with the fact that it comes from around the time when the hominids are thought to have diverged from chimpanzee suggests its closeness to the common ancestors of human and chimpanzee, Aurorin. This species was named in July 2001 from fossils discovered in western Kenya, dated 6 million years ago. The fossils include fragmentary arm and thigh bones, lower jaws and teeth. The limb bones are about the size of a female chimpanzee. Its finders have claimed that Aurorin was a human ancestor, adopted to both bipedality and tree climbing, and that the Australopithecus are an ex extinct offshoot. A later study in 2004 has found further evidence of bipedality in the fossil femur. Ardipithecus remidus 
This species was discovered by a team led by Tim White and Asfa and Sua in 1994. Most remains are skull fragments. It has been dated about 4.4 to 5.8 million years. Evidence suggests that they were possibly biped and that some individuals were about 122 cm tall. The teeth are intermediate between those of earlier apes and Australopithecus afarensis, which is known to be the earliest form of Australopithecus. But one baby tooth is very primitive, which resembles a chimpanzee tooth more than any other known hominid tooth. More recently, a number of fragmentary fossils discovered between 1997 and 2001 and dated from 5.25 to 5.8 million years old have been assigned first to a new subspecies that is Ardipithecus remidus, then Kadaba, and then later as a new species Ardipithecus Kadaba. One of these fossils is a toe bone belonging to a bipedal creature, but is a few hundred thousand years younger than the rest of the fossil and so its identification with Kadaba is not as firm as the other fossil. Now let's discuss about the later varieties Australopithecus anamensis. In 1965 Brian Patterson and other scholar from Harvard University discovered a single arm bone of an early human at the site of Kanapoi in northern Kenya. This could not conclude anything from this discovery since there was no supportive evidence. Later in the year 1994, Meave Leakey discovered some more fossil remains from the same site of Lake Turkana. The material consists of skull fragments and long bones. The word anam a -N -A -M, means lake in the Turkana language. Anamensis existed between 4.2 and 3.9 million years ago and has a mixture of a primitive feature in the skull and advanced feature in the body. The teeth and jaw are very similar to those of older fossil apes. A partial tibia the larger of the two lower leg bones shows stronger evidence of bipedality and a humerus, the upper arm bone, which is extremely human-like. Note that although the skull and skeletal bones are thought to be from the same species, this is not confirmed. Australopithecus afarensis. A number of fossils of this type has been discovered at different times, that is between 1975 to 1991. But Johnson and Johnson and Gray, Kimball and Reck from different places of East Africa like Hadar in Ethiopia, Letoli in Tanzania. Of this fossil remain, the one discovered from Hadar is nicknamed as Lucy, an adult female skeleton of 25 year old. Australopithecus afarensis existed between 3.9 and 3 million years ago. They had an ape-like face with a low forehead, a bony ridge over the eyes, a flat nose and no chin. They had protruding jaw large back teeth. Cranial capacity varied from about 375 to 550 cc. The skull, its skull is similar to that of a chimpanzee except for the more human-like teeth. 
the canine teeth are much smaller than those of modern apes but larger and more pointed than those of women and shape of the jaw is between the rectangular shape of apes and the parabolic shape of human however their pelvis and leg bone closely resemble modern human and leave no doubt that they were biped although adopted to walking rather than running a footprint in the volcanic ash from latoli is the oldest evidence of bipedalism among the australopithecus females were substantially smaller than males a condition known as sexual dimorphism height varied between about 107 cm and 152 cm the figure and the toe bones are curved and proportionally longer than in human but the hands are similar to human in most other detail most scientists consider this evidence that afarensis was still partially adopted to climbing in trees other considered it evolutionary baggage canenthropus platypus a partial skull was discovered from lomiqui in kenya dated about 3.5 million years the size of the, size of the skull is similar to australopithecus afarensis and australopithecus africanus and has a large flat face and a small teeth this variety is contemporary to lucy team void rejected the genus canenthropus and considered it as a variant of australopithecus afarensis now let's discuss about the australopithecus africanus all the fossil of this variety have been discovered from south africa of this the discovery of tong child a skull of a child made by raymond dart in 1924 this marks the beginning of the discovery of australopithecus this tong child this 3 year old child skull is the first early human skull ever discovered in africa raymond dart claimed this fossil as an ancestor to human form its position of foramen magnum which is like the modern human australopithecus africanus existed between 3 to 2 million years ago it is similar to afarensis and was also biped but the body size was slightly greater their brain size may also have been slightly larger may be ranging between 420 and 500 cc this is a little larger than the chimpanzee brain despite a similar body size but still not advanced in the areas necessary for speech they lack teeth teeth were little bigger than in afarensis although the teeth and jaw of africanus are much more larger than those of human they are far more similar to human teeth than they are those of apes the shape of the jaw is now fully parabolic very similar to like human being that's why we call it as a belongs to nearer to human being and the size of the canine teeth is further reduced compared to afarensis australopithecus ethiopithecus or parapithecus ethiopithecus called as black skull discovered by allen walker in 1985 near west turkana in kenya australopithecus ethiopithecus existed between 2.6 and 2.3 million year ago this species is popularly known as the black skull it is so called because the magnes deposit in the soil deposit where the skull was located 
stain it black it may be an ancestor of other two robust varieties of australopithecus that is robustus and bossai but it has a baff baffling mixture of primitive and advanced trait the brain size is very small that is 410 cc part of the skull particularly the hind portion are very primitive most resembling afferences other characteristics are massiveness of the face jaw and single teeth tooth found and the largest sagittal crest australopithecus robustus discovered from cromdarai from swarthkans and raimolen cave all these sites are in south africa australopithecus robustus had a body similar to that of africanus but a larger and more robust skull and teeth it existed between 2 and 1.5 million year ago the massive face is flat or dish with no forehead and large bro ridges it has relatively small front teeth but massive grinding teeth in a lower large lower jaw its diet would have been mostly coarse tough food and that needed a lot of chewing the average brain size is about 530 cc bones excavated with robust skeleton indicate that they may have been used as a digging tool australopithecus bossai or paranthropus bossai or gigantropus bossai this is the most robust form of australopithecus discovered by mary leake from old way george tanzania by richard leake from lake tarkana kenya and by suwa from ethiopia australopithecus bossai existed between 1.8 and 1.1 million year ago it was similar to robustus but the face and cheek teeth were even more massive some smaller being up to 2 cm across the brain size is very similar to robustus about 530 cc some scholars opinion about bossai and robustus to be a variant of the same species sequence of appearance thus we see a spectrum of varieties of australopithecus they appeared in this world during pleistocene epoch and were distributed mostly in south and east africa the question is that why the distribution of australopithecus is restricted to east and south africa still need to be answered moreover how these varieties diversified members are related to each other and with different species of genus human are yet to reach any consensus even though they have been divided by some investigator into several genera like selenthropus ardipithecus australopithecus and paranthropus it is still unclear whether the earlier hominids were simply diverse within a widely distributed group for example like modern human or they represent more than any one evolutionary life the sequence of appearance of this fossil record reveal that selenthropus came around 6 to 7 million years whereas ororin around 6 million year ardipithecus around 4.4 to 4.8 million years the gracile form of australopithecus that is australopithecus afarensis and australopithecus africanus and australopithecus garhi between 4.2 to 2 million years 
Kenanthropus around 3.5 million years and Paranthropus both robustus and boci between 2.6 and 1 million year. Despite these varieties, paleoanthropologists, that is scientists who study human fossil, identify two major forms of Australopithecus, gracile and robustus. Some of the scholars prefer to keep them in two different genera, that is Australopithecus gracile form and Paranthropus robustus form. It is believed that one of the species of the gracile form of Australopithecus evolved into genus Homo, although the robustus form appeared later than the gracile form. Now let's try to summarize this model with some of the important points like the world Australopithecus which means southern apes it was discovered from different sites of South Africa even they, we have a several sites of East Africa also gave the evidence of uh, Australopithecus. They last for uh, around their, their period is around uh, 4 million years ago or might be even before we don't have that we don't have a, a such fossil material to explain their existence even before that but maybe the member of this groups were bipedal with reduced teeth size this bipedalistic characteristics and reduced teeth size is bringing them somewhat closer to human rather than apes and especially the canine size is all is very reduced similar more or less not very similar but somewhat similar to human there is there we, there is a number of earlier varieties of australopithecus or australopithecus like like skulls were were discovered or excavated from different sites of africa like salanthropus ororin audiopithecus we have a even number of evidence of the later varieties also called as australopithecus afarensis Australopithecus africanus. This Australopithecus afarensis and africanus, they are known to be the gracile form of Australopithecus. Whereas Australopithecus robustus and Australopithecus boci, they are the robustus form. So both gracile form and robustus, robustus form form the later varieties of Australopithecus. We have also number of evidences or number of material that's, that was discovered, excavated from different places like Salanthropus, it came around 6 to 7 million years ago, Ororin, it ero erosed around 6 million years ago, Audiopithecus is about 4.4 to 4.8 million years ago. The gracile form that include Afarensis and Africanas, forms of Australopithecus they were between 4.2 to 2 million years ago. In between, there is a, a more or less similar but somewhat better than this one is a Kenya Pithecus is around 3.5 million years ago. We also have evidence called of a Paranthropus, both Robustus and Boci. This, this Robustus form is also called as a Paranthropus form and it includes Australopithecus Robustus and Australopithecus Boci. It was between 2.6 and 1 million years ago. So, it is believed that one of the species of the gracile form of Australopithecus, it evolved and evolved into a genus Homo. Though the robustus form appeared later than the gracile form. Thank you.